This tune is so freaking tight. God dang, guys. Hey guys, sky 2 Quaddy. Um, I was going to make this a three video series, one with the parts and the setup, one with the pit tuning, and then one with the video of the actual flight from the pit tuning. But if you're gonna sit here and invest almost an hour of your time to decide whether or not this works for you, I invite you to just go to the back of the video because I'm gonna include the flight footage of this actual tune the very next day after I do it. And you can decide for yourself if this was for you, uh, if you think you could possibly learn something, or if it's not. And either way, I think uh, it's more beneficial for me to do it this way for you so that you know that you're investing your time in something that's well, worthwhile for you at the end and that you can see the results of the work that you put in. All right, guys, so that's what I have for now. Enjoy the series, and I'll talk to you soon. Sky 2 Quaddy, signing out. All right, guys, we're back with the actual pit tuning section. And what you're gonna wanna do before you do the actual pit tune is make sure that you have on the props that you plan on using for your regular flight, uh, your all-up weight, how you plan on flying your quad. In this case, I'm gonna have a GoPro 11, and I'm flying it 8S with 3,300 milliamp, 4S packs in series for 8S. So this is the all up weight that I will typically fly with this quad. So this is the weight that I want to tune it. Um, we're going to try to get the best tune that we can out of the best weight, the weight that we plan on flying naturally with these things. Okay, so make sure you have on fresh props and make sure that uh, you are using everything that you're going to be flying with that day, the precise weight, All right? So do that and let's go upstairs and do the pit tuning. All right, guys, before we go up in the room, I've actually done the pivot basement pit tuning and flew it in the room. And like I said, if you guys don't feel comfortable doing it in your room, I've done this with over 50 quads already or 50 times. Um, my room is confined and the whole point of it is, is to show you even in the most confined area, you can basement pit your quad in your room, in your house and still have a great flying quad. And that's what Ryan White does. He does it in a bigger room and even uh, Rotor Riot, they also do it in a room too. But uh, I purposely did it in my bedroom so that you can see it can be done in the most confined places. And if you know how to fly a drone uh, line of sight, then this is not a big deal. But uh, any people that have not done that, they could look at it and say, oh my gosh, that's so scary. But it really is not scary. You just have to know how to you know, fly line of sight. You know, fly line of sight, like fly a little bit, punch it, roll it, and just uh, let it disarm over my bed. But anyway, you're not gonna see it moving that much. And the whole idea with the basement pit tuning in uh, angle mode is to mess with the gyro data, the gyro on the uh, flight controller, so you can see how much noise is going through the quad. And I was literally going like this, this, you know, pitching it and just killing the sticks forward and back as much as I could and side to side on the, the roll. But it doesn't look like it's that much movement in a quad because the quad is a macro quad. It's a, eight and nine inch quads. So it only looks like it's going like this and like this, not a lot of movement, but it actually is. Um, with a five inch quad or a four inch quad, you're when you do that, you're gonna see a huge, a much bigger uh, fluctuation in the quad than you would a macro quad. But yeah, believe me, we're getting the proper data from these uh, miniature flights and that's that. So I just want you to see that that is uh, actually what's happening. Anyway, hope you uh, appreciate and can enjoy the actual, the lesson of how to tune your quad indoors and do it in a different environment that you feel comfortable with. And after you do it a few times, it's, uh, yeah, it's like second nature to you. It's second nature to me now. So anyway, that's what I got for now, guys. Uh, let's keep tuning. Let's do the tune. Sky 2 Quad, sign up. All right, guys, Sky 2 Quad here. Now we're back to the pit tuning portion. This is going to be based with pit tuning. I'm going to do it in my bedroom. I'm going to do it with eight and nine inch props, and I'm going to do it for 8S. So this is our budget build that we're building for $300 that's running on a nine inch quad, both 6S and 8S. So we're gonna do the pit tune, but first we need to download the pit toolbox. So I want you to go to this website, which I'll actually put in the link in the description below, and you're going to want to download uh, the zip file that is 
pertinent to whatever you have oh with my Mac OS or Windows I have Windows so we'll download that take a second here and I'm gonna go ahead and probably let's see I'm gonna open it up in file show and folder it's here but I may go ahead and well I'm using PID, PID toolbox 6 point of uh, 0 0.61 uh, let's just unzip it let's do it here unzip here fine and it's open okay in main all right so when you get to main you're gonna open and you're going to use the PID toolbox exe it's probably gonna update mine hopefully it doesn't ruin my old settings because I kind of like or I'm used to PID toolbox 0.61 but it's probably not that big of a deal we'll find out okay so it's it takes a little bit uh, some time for it to open up the first time but after that it shouldn't take too much now we're in main okay is it done yet is it done yes it is okay <clears throat> so here you're going to see the area where you can select your black box files from uh, from your flight so I don't know if you can see that here probably not okay you can see that portion that's fine when you see the select so you're gonna hit the select once you download it I, I typically download it and I just save it onto my desktop because it's a self-contained program so you want to go ahead and just put that to your desktop and then you're gonna hit select to find the files where you have your PID settings this is from an old pin PID that I have but basically all you're gonna do is we're gonna just first start with D term and then I term and then master slider um, but this is what it should look like when you find when you set your after each flight you're gonna have your your black box log and it's gonna be like this we'll just upload one just for the heck of it just to kind of see what it looks like and there you have it and then we're gonna go into well we're going to that part later but first before we continue on go ahead and download uh, the current PID toolbox 0.65 for your Windows or your zip file Windows or your OS system and then come back to this video all right, that's what we got for now. All right, guys, now we're back in beta flight and we are going to set up our, get this out of the way. We're gonna set up our PIDs and make sure that we have everything cleared for black box. First of all, let's make sure that our black box log is empty because we wanna make sure it's empty before each flight. So I do recommend if you see anything here, uh, just automatically erase it. Okay, so yes to erase. And sometimes this takes a little bit, takes a long time, so I'll just, wait a few seconds and then hit cancel because it's already deleted anyway we're gonna overwrite it so now we have an empty file for our black box and we need to go back into our PID tuning tab and we are going to make sure first that we are connected to the right one now remember I said that PID uh, profile 2 is 8s so let's go ahead and plug this quad in first and make sure that we are that it switches to profile 2 for 8s Okay, switch is good. So now I'll unplug it. We're in the right profile. And I just want you guys to follow along. Uh, if you watch Ryan's vid videos, he'll pretty much have stock settings that are basic settings that you should have first before you even do this. But remember prior to even doing this that we need to be, or we need to have, um, what do you call that? Uh, we'll go back into here and just jog my memory for you guys. We need to make sure that we are on bi-directional D-shot and that our motor poles, the number of magnets, are correct before even doing this. Okay, so make sure that that's correct. We're going back in, and as stated earlier, my quad is now set up exactly how I'm gonna fly it with the, the heavy battery that I'm using, my GoPro, and the right props. So just follow along as I set this for stock and then go from there. So my master multiplier is gonna be at one. My pitch tracking will be at 1.05. My pitch dampening will be at 1.15. Just follow these, don't even think about it. This is what Brian does in the beginning. So, or Ryan, excuse me. And then we are going to bring our I wobble to zero, do dampening to zero, and feed forward to zero. Okay? And what we're gonna focus on, we're going to use, we're going to focus on our dampening first. We're going to do our D term first. 
and then we're after that we're going to bring in our our eye gains or wobble drift wobble eye gains and then after that we'll, we'll increase our master multiplier and that's it that's going to give us a great tune to fly your quad and make sure that our motors are are nice and cool during flight and less noise in the frame and we'll show you how to do that so we're gonna, for the dampening for the d gains we're going to start at 0.6 and increments of 0.2 so we're going to go 0.6 first then 0.8 and 1, then 1.2, 1.4, 1.6, 1.8, all the way to the end until we hear, until we hear any type of uh, weird science sound, some weird oscillations, and we have to back it off and know that, that we've gone too far. I'm going to stop from there. So right now we're going to keep the settings here, 0.6, tracking is going to stay at 1, everything else is 0, these 3, and go ahead and pause the video and just make sure that you have these settings. And I'm going to go ahead and save. And that's it. So this is going to be 0 0.6 and then we'll move to 0.8 next. So we'll go ahead in the room now and we'll go ahead and do our pit tuning. And remember that we're gonna have our um, quad set to, what did I tell you guys in the beginning? We want our quad set, our modes, to angle mode, okay? So make sure that your quad is on angle mode when you do this, otherwise it's not gonna work well, all right? Okay guys, let's go to the next step. All right guys, we're in the room, we're going to do the pit tuning, and right now we're gonna focus on D-term. And like I said in the previous uh, video, we're going 0 0.6, 0 0.8, one, on up to like 1.6 or whatever, we hear some trilling oscillation and we'll stop and back it off. Uh, the controller is set to angle mode, my switches, and what we're going to do is we're going to hover the quad, not really hover, we're going to lift it and we're going to go go roll and we're going to go pitch forward, roll and pitch forward. Not really a lot of yaw, don't really care too much about that, but it's going to be pitch and roll and a couple of punches, really light, not to hit the ceiling or anything, just to uh, get the feel of what it would be like outside. But yeah, we're going to do this all indoors and then we'll take it out probably tomorrow or Saturday and see how the tune goes. All right, so first off is... 0.6. Let's see. Get you in. Okay. And we'll do some angle mode flights. All right. Make sure our props are on right. And it's going to be rough because our lower settings on this is going to sound a little bit rough on the quad until we go up in values. So now we're going pitch forward, roll, and if we have it in angle mode, it's not going to flip all the way over. And I'm pushing this stick as hard as I can. Do it for about 15 seconds, a little bit of thrust. And just a little bit more. A little bit more pitch, roll. No yaw. And then uh, that's it. Go to bed and disarm. And safely land it on the bed. And we'll do that all the way until we get to uh, 1.6. Alright. Let's continue on. Okay guys, we're back in beta flight. Make sure that we're still recording. Yes, we are. So this is our last flight at 2.0. And I did kind of do a demo of what you would see while I'm flying it in and over my bed and how I disarm. But now we have the last flight to add into our log, to our D-turn log. So just go ahead and download that or upload it. Let's do its thing. And we'll go ahead and open up the PID toolbox too so you can see where we navigate and upload these files. To our tunes. Okay, that's done. Okay, and erase the flash. Go ahead. Okay, so now let's go ahead and let's count our two pit tunes here because okay, going from top to bottom, we should have 0.6 to point to 2.0. So we got 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 1, 1.2, 1.4, 1.5, 1.6, 1.8, 1.9, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 
Hit EXE, execution. Might take a bit here, so I'm gonna go in while I'm doing that and copy my path just in case. Copy. Well, it's still opening. Sometimes it takes a little bit, it's not a big deal. Okay, I need to make sure you guys can see everything here. It's gonna be tricky because last time I did this, not everything appeared, so you gotta make sure that you see it. Why is that, why is that appearing? Too much jump on the screen, I don't like that. Be able to see what I want you to see, which could be a real problem. Why is that showing up? One of these screens, let me see if I can delete this one. Delete. Yes. Okay, there we go. That's what I want you guys to see. All right, so we're going to load those files. And what you're going to do is you're going to hit the select button here. And we're going to look for where our D-term file was. So I'm going to go back into the beginning here where I have my AMAX flight log. And I have my folders under my desktop of AMAX folders and the D-term. Everything else is empty, should be empty because we're not there yet. So we're going to D-term and we're going to click the top, shift, hold the bottom, and then open. If I have a flight log that's too low, it might say, okay, you want this file. It might give me a choice of files to upload because one's too, it doesn't have enough time. So you want to pick the one that has more flight time, if that's the case. Okay, so we have everything in, it appears. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and trim these files, each one. So the first one is, it always starts in the bottom for some reason. So the first one, this is a 2.0. So if you see here, we're going to, you want to go to in the beginning cut off to where everything ended so about right here at this toe is where you want to begin it and pretty much at the end where they have this white line they're, they're, it's pretty accurate so that's fine so I'm gonna go ahead and choose that then I'm gonna choose this down arrow here I don't know if you can see this go over here a little bit right here down arrow that was 2 right down here 2.0 and now this is 0.6 I'm gonna go to 0.6 do the same thing for each one Here, to the point eight. I can tell that these earlier flights are not that great, so it gets a little bit better as we go up in D turn. Point six eight one, I guess. I don't know. It's gonna keep going until I hit the end. This one was a little bit choppy too, but that's the tip. That's where it ends. Beginning. Just keep going on. Right here. Now we're really using budget motors. They aren't the best motors, like FPV motors, but we're gonna tune them the best we can. And just we want to get we want to get the noise out as much as we can, and just decent response with you know, budget motors or any motors. If you're able to tune and get the noise out of a budget motor, you, you don't really need to waste the money on the more expensive motors because if you don't tune your quad right, it doesn't matter how much money you spend on expensive motors, it's gonna fly like trash anyway. So, kid tune your quad is, is just the most important thing in my opinion, if you want a great flight. And most of you guys are better pilots than me. So if you can do this PID tuning on your own, just imagine how much better you're gonna fly because when you do it right, you be able to point and shoot and go wherever you want. So now we want to go into the step response tool. So just follow my lead here. Step response tool. We're going to go in and we are going to, let me see how to make sure that you can see everything here. Kind of widen it out. I have two screens open. One that shows my recording and one that doesn't. And the reason I'm doing it this way is because I already pit tuned this quad once, but you weren't able to see everything I was doing, so I had to, I'm having to redo everything all over again, so. No biggie. It's from friends, from the FPV buddies. 
All right, I think that's, how, I'm gonna have to just keep moving them back and forth so you can see each side. But anyway, first off, you're gonna want to click the top and then drag the bar to the bottom, shift, hold, and now we want to run. Okay, we're gonna step response, so we're gonna run these. And see what we get, it's gonna take a little bit here. Okay, that looks, you're gonna see the difference here. That's, that's very bad in the beginning. So basically, in the beginning, you're gonna see that the this is 0 0.2, 2 is 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 1, 1 1.2, all the way down. So the goal here is that we want to reach the set point one as fast as we can, but we don't want to overshoot. This is overshooting. This is way too high. So we want to be as close to set point as possible when we get up when we start the quad, and we want to stay close to set point one all the way through. Ideally, on good, really good motors, my goal, personal goal is to be just above one and not really cross set point. But it's okay if you're just close to set point and you're a little bit above and, and below because everybody's everybody's quads I'm figuring out is theirs are like that. Now, if uh, <clears throat> we're, we're gonna focus on roll and pitch, okay? If you have your, if you have jaggedy sine waves and you're close to set point and you see a lot of sine waves, like, a, like an oscilloscope, too much, right? That's still a noisy quad. Even though you're close to set point, you really, ideally, you want it to be more flat like this. Okay, we're not gonna worry about yaw because yaw is just, we're not, we didn't use a lot of yaw for this, uh, for this test. But we wanna zoom in and see which one looks the best for response, for a roll at least. And to me, it's looking like this blue line could be a contender. Possibly this aqua, but let me look and take a look at this blue line. Let's see how much close it is to set point cross a little bit Go a little bit under and back over now these two lines here these two, the last two seem to be the best which is 2 and 1.8 and latency though is pretty much on three here, which is six, eight, one. One here, one here. I don't know, it looks like, it looks like point, 1.8 is close to uh, set point, not crossing too much. Go back out. Aqua though, this point here, at least it goes over set point just a little bit and faster. Huh, I think that aqua doesn't go up. For my preference, it's not really crossing underneath that set point line to one. So for me, I'm kind of colorblind though. For me, it looks like that that aqua, which is color right here. So if I can match that up, it looks like it's this one, number six. So number six is gonna be two, 1.8, and 1.6. Two, 1.8, 1.6. Good there, I think it's 1.6, guys. Yeah, for me, I don't want, I really try to stay above that line and I think that not a lot of overshoot, it reaches a set point pretty quick, and it's not going up and down below that set point. And you're gonna find, like I said, most of these, these three on the bottom, these are the best ones. This, the first one that we did at point two, that's really bad, and, and point eight overshoots past set point too much, right? So you just want it to be really smooth, and ideally, I think it, it would have been between these two. I like the, the dark blue, but it's not hitting set point fast enough, and it's crossing between the uh, top and bottom. Let's go into the pitch. Let's see if it's the same case for 1.6. This is aqua. Under a little bit. And this one, the blue, two, looks better. but it's not hitting set point very quick. It's, it's taken a while to reach, to reach. Ideally, if we can get any of these to reach 
set point quicker here and not overshoot that much and then come back down, that'd be great. But to me, it still looks like 1.6 is the winner. 0 0.2, 0 0.8, 0 0.6. Okay, so now what we want to do is go back into beta flight and we are going to pick 1.6 from our D term. And we're going to save. So that's it. We're gonna, that's what we're working with our D term. Now we got our D term as high as we can be possible. Now we want to move the I term and remove any type of uh, any type of wobble or uh, bounce back as possible. So we're going to go with 0.3, like Ryan likes to use 0 0.3, 0 0.6, 0 0.9, all the way up. So we're going to go in increments of three. Okay. So we're going to go in increments of three. I'm going to save that, and we will continue on with the next flights. Oops. Okay. Okay, now we're on to our I term at point three, and we'll do the same sequence for each one, all the way up to 2.0 if you can. And the more you do this, the more you're going to get comfortable using uh, picturing in your room and using angle mode instead of uh, you know, after. If you use after, you're going to put the slide and put yourself up to the Same thing with the floor, to the side, the floor, to the side. As much as you can. A little bit of thrust. Make sure that you're feeling. I'm so afraid. It's in my room. Oh my goodness. Okay. Over my bed. And then I just feel the throttle. That's it. Alright, so we just got done doing the uh, I-term flights. Now we're going to look into our black box. Only went to 1.8. So what we're going to do first, we want to clear out our previous flights. So this is the one that we had. I'm just going to head and, if you can see everything here, I'm just going to exit out. And where's the other one? And on our main menu here, we want to, you see this reset button here? Just go ahead and press that. We want to clear it out. And do we really wish to continue to get rid of everything? Yes. And the reason why we want to click yes, because if we don't, and we keep selecting and adding more uh, flight logs, it's just going to keep adding them on top of each other. And you're not going to know which is which. And you're not going to know if you're making any improvements or not. So just click yes, start from scratch. And now we're just going to find our iTerm folder. This is our D term. iTerm's here. And the top, shift, left click bottom, open all of them. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to trim to the beginning. So unclick here and click it one more time. We have our trim line. This is 1.8. And you kind of see where I was using the pitch and roll in these areas. And in these areas, I was just, just uh, pretty much using throttle and then back to pitch and roll in this area. Okay, so now we're going to go back here. That was 1.8, back to point. Three. Let's see, it's, it's fine there. Point three point six. Right at the toe here. Point nine. That one doesn't look that great. We'll find out, right? As I went up and I turned, the motor started getting cooler. So I pushed the D term as high as I could. And now to remove the, the wobble and the uh, bounce back, we're increased the I term. But now I see as I'm going higher that my motors are getting cooler, which that's a good thing. Especially with budget motors, right? So we're making a goal here is we're making our, our budget craft. Well, actually the, the frame is really good, but the motors I won't say are the best, but we're making them perform like they are top tier motors because we're getting rid of as much noise as we can. And we're doing this on 8S. Just remember, we're doing this 8S. Okay, now we want to go ahead and read our step response tool. 
Let's see if just shrink that down. We'll make sure we can see everything. You can see everything. I seem a little bit scrunched, but that's okay. So it's already to the top at one point or point three. And the bottom is one point eight, I believe. Shift, and we're gonna go ahead and run and see what our results are. All right, we're still not a lot of overshoot up here. We're pretty close to the set point. We want to see which ones are, in my opinion, what I like is close to set point, but not underneath it as much. So these actually reach set point a little, a little bit of overshoot, not not horrible. So this is point. If we go back out here, this is point three, point six, uh, point three, point six, point nine, one point two, and so on. So what we have. Let's, let's analyze this. Oh, the dark looks doesn't look bad. So that's like 0 0.3, 0 0.6, 0 0.3, 0 0.6, 0 0.3 went under a little bit. 0 0.6 just stayed above the line. 0 0.6 looks like it's still staying above the line, and then it just dropped a little bit there. Probably a lot of roll input that I put in. Let's see the higher ones though, point, 1.8. Point I don't like that overshoot as much here. So, actually it's weird because, it's not that it's weird, it's that point 0.3 or point 0.6 it looks pretty decent and so does the far end you know, going to 1.4 or 1.5, whatever that is. But I'm not going to use this one. That's it's 3, 6, 9, 12. If that's 1.8, I'm not going to use that one. 0 0.8 is out. Go over here and look at our peak and roll. See, I'm not seeing much of an improvement from 1 point, I'm sorry, 0.9. Definitely not 1.8. That response is not great. This one looks not too bad, but ooh, let's see. No, that's not under that's not under set point, so that's not bad. I don't know, right now it's looking like I'm probably gonna stick with 0.9. Let's see what it's doing here. Staying above the line on pitch. Point three it looks pretty good though too. It's not crossing. Oh, is it crossing there? Well, it's, it is crossing there. Actually, once you do the D term and you've got that dialed in, that's half. You're halfway done, right? So basically, I, I'm, I'm looking at. I think I want to stick with point six. Point six looks good to me. That's this. That's this line here, this one. Yeah, in my opinion, it doesn't cross as much as the others. It stays above it, doesn't overshoot a lot. It's That's good to me. So we're gonna go with 0.6 on the I term. And save. Now last but not least, we're going to Start with a master multiplier, and we already were at 1.0, so we're just going to go in increments of 1.2. And the way I look at master multiplier is like my turbo. Whatever I have set for my D term or my I term, that's good to go. And this is just improving it the more that I go up. And you're going to notice that you're not going to see much of a difference when you go up in the master multiplier from 1 to 1.8 even. So we're just going to get as as close as we can, or move it up as much as we can, but. Uh, I don't know, we'll, we'll see what our we'll see what our readings are, but yeah, I, I look at it as it's it's the boost program, so that's the way you should look at it too. Point two, save, and now we're good to go. Let's go ahead and start those flights. Here's another bit of information about pit tuning in your house. <clears throat> Some might have questions that say, "Oh, well, you're pit tuning in your house. 
you know, it's not the same as flying outdoors and, you know, your motors probably aren't going to be as, as hot as if it flies outdoor. Eh, not true. Because since we're doing this in the house and we're doing punches and we're going pit, we're going, you know, pitch forward and roll, it, the motors actually get hotter in your room or in a, in a confined space than it does outdoors because outdoors it's flying, you know, through the wind and the wind is actually cooling off the motors. You don't get that in your house. So if you can keep the, the motors cooler in your house, pit tuning, then they're going to be very cool when you're in flight. And right now, moving the master multiplier, at this stage, my motors are cool. I'm, I'm not really concerned about any type of flyaway at this point. We've got it down to really where we want it. And this is like a honing a knife. We were, we were carving a knife in the beginning and now we're just honing it to get it to precisely where we want it. So that's how we're doing at this stage. And uh, yeah, so let's get this. It's at 1.6 right now. I think I'm gonna stop it here because I've never really had to go past 1.2 on the master multiplier. So. Telemetry recovered. And I've actually, yeah, 1.2 you're gonna see is probably gonna be like the, around the best readings for this setup. This is at 1.6. 25, See how twitchy it is now? I want to touch it up a little bit, and if it's coming down and it starts to wobble a little bit on the way down, then I know it's too much. Yeah, this is not going to be great here. I think 1.6 is too high. Let me feel the motors. Let me actually unplug first. Yeah, believe it or not, the motors are just warm, but I, I didn't like how fast it was twitching. So we're going to load it into Betaflight and uh, let's read it. Let's read the black box. All right, guys. All right, guys. We are now finished with the master multiplier. So we want to go ahead and load that into the pit toolbox and see what we get. This is our last flight that we did with the iTerm. We're going to go ahead and clear that out or delete that one. And then we're going to go back in here to the log viewer and we're going to hit reset and clear everything out again. Now what we want to do is I want to load the best flight that I had in my opinion for uh, iTerm which was I believe 0.6 and at 0.6 all of those flights with iTerm they were already the master multiplier was already at 1.0. So I went ahead and I actually copied it outside. So this is point three. This is point three and at 1.0 master multiplier. All of these are gonna be at point three as a matter of fact. It's just now that you're just messing with the master multiplier sliders. That's gonna be point six. I mean at one point that was one, yeah, this is that was, but that was one point zero in the master, this is one point two, one point four, and one point six. Order. And we'll go ahead and trim them. And what I've noticed from all these flights so far is that I didn't have any trilling sounds. I didn't have any have any noise or felt like the quad was going to fly away because we did these in incrementally like we should. And actually, with with larger quads or heavier quads like this, you have less of a likelihood for those flyaways. On my five inches, on my four inches, those are the ones that are, you know you can. You won't be able to push the master multiplier that far, and even with the D-term and I-term, the D-term, you may not be able to push it as far as I did as well, because I was able to get to all the way to 2.0 and not have any trillion oscillation sounds or any uh, any weird vibration or noise. So keep that in mind when you're doing these big quads. The more you do them, I feel better about doing the bigger quads than I do about doing my the lighter quads. So okay, just keep trimming them. But it's all pretty easy. See how he's doing it? You punch it a little bit, you, do pit, uh, you pitch forward to the side, and do it for about 15 seconds, really slight punches to see if it's gonna get away from you, and that's it. You do that for each flight. Let's see, boom. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and go back into our step response tool here. Going to reduce the size of that and make sure that we can see it on screen. It's always 
a little bit too big. You guys can see everything. Okay, so we only have three here now. So 1.0, 1.2, 1.4, and 1.6 of the master. Run. Okay, I can already tell you the the higher we went in the master, the worse it got. You know, so at least on on the roll. So that was 1.6, so that's out of the question for me. I, I won't use that. Uh, 1 and 1.2 looks pretty good. Well, actually, 1 looks like it's a little bit a little bit too high for my liking, but 1.2 reaches set point pretty quick, almost the same as 1. 1 1.4, you see how it has a lot of these, these ripples in the wave. I like a smooth wave going up and across. And that lets me know that I don't have too much noise in my quad. And when I see some tunes and they're just, you know, they're jagged up here and they're always, and they're just jaggedy all the way across, up and down, even though they're close to a uh, set point, to me that's just, and to me that's just way too much noise. So, you still haven't gotten rid of the noise, I feel. So, I'm, I'm not liking 1.6 at all. Um, 1.4, I'm still seeing a little bit too much waves and we're underneath set point. 1.2, 1.2 kind of the same. To me it's looking like just one, master multiplier just set up one and we're good. Yep, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna run with the master multiplier set up one. We're gonna go back into beta flight, go back into our pit tuning tab. And we're gonna move our master multiplier back down to one. Well, I tell you guys, I never really have to go past 1.2 with the master multiplier, so one is good. And this for me, guys, this is this is my tune. This is, I mean, if you wanna mark this down for your quads, you go ahead, but just remember, this is my tune with everything that I'm gonna use. When I'm using this 8S batteries, and I'm using the GoPro Hero 11, um, 8040 props, this is my tune for 8S with eight inch props. And I'll have a different tune for my nine inch props. Okay, so we went ahead, we set up the quad in the very beginning, we made it ready so that we can actually do the PID tuning, and we set our parameters, and we made sure that when we plug in the batteries, that they go into the right white, white, right white, we go into the right PID profile. So right now I have everything in profile two, which is 8S, and I, what I would do is probably right now, yeah, I'm gonna do that actually. I, mean, I haven't tuned my nine inch, for nine inch for 6S, but I'm pretty confident it's gonna run similarly. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this profile two to each profile. So I'm gonna copy to profile one. Oops, profile two, we want profile two. So I want profile two and I wanna copy this profile to profile three. Copy, and profile two, I want to copy it to profile four. Copy, and I want to save that. So all of them have the same PID tune on each profile, and when I change the batteries out, it's going to go to 4S, 6S, 5S, uh, or 8S. All right, so one other thing. What else was there? Let's go back into response. Okay, spectral analyzer. I don't really know how to read this as much but uh, let's see one of the key things one of the key areas that uh, you know that Ryan was looking at like I said he has he's a scientist on it so he, he's got better methods than I do but these this is what works for me guys it's it's yeah which is fine gyro so when you run the gyros he saying something he mentioned something about it, it shouldn't be over 10 so this looks pretty good. So nothing should be over 10. If you have any spikes that are going over 10, close to 7.0, then you have issues. But we're well underneath 10. We're at 20 to 30, 20 to 30, 20 here. Yeah, if you, sometimes I'll get these weird spikes because I have noise, not just in the motor, but your frame. You gotta make sure. Guys, if you get a tune that's tight like this, or semi-tight, that when you're flying well and you have a crash, Tighten all of your screws, man. Check everything on your quad because I have had flyaways after a crash because it, the tune was lost. He hit something, uh, 
bolts got loose, arms were loose, and the tune was tight enough or too tight where it wasn't prepared for all that vibration and noise and the, and the quad just flew out, flew away, wigged out. So make sure after every crash, number one, check your screws, which you should do that before every flight anyway. And after each crash, I would go ahead and, you know, a lot of these, a lot of my buddies and a lot of people I know, they'll go ahead and use turtle mode and, <laughs> and bring their quad back. Well, guess what? I mean, your props are jacked up. You're going to have a lot more noise in your quad. I would replace those, those props once you get it back home. All right. So tighten up your screws all the time. Check them, check your props. And yeah, that's about it guys. That's what I've got for you on this tune. So everything looks pretty good. I mean, from the beginning from what we had to what we have now, I would say this is success. Okay guys, this is the last part of the basement pit tune that I'm going to show you. Um, remember we just tuned a nine inch quad on eight S with eight inch props with a 31 10 um, pretty much budget motor from surpass hobby we i think overall we did a pretty darn good job so far and we'll take it to the park and verify that but i already know how it's going to fly but uh, we want to compare it i just for my own peace of mind and for your peace of mind guys i want you to know that this works and we're getting similar results to the creator ryan white so this is his final pit tune on a five inch quad now he reaches set point earlier and barely overshoots and he's just a little bit above and under I try to stay above but he's the master so he knows what he's doing and it's you can see how these are just nice waves going up right his hit set point is straight maybe down or up a little bit but not much it's staying close to set point but it's smooth and straight right so even down here on the on the uh, the roll the same thing right what do we have we didn't hit we did not hit uh, set point as fast as he did as early as he did but come on we're dealing with a, a nine inch quad <laughs> and the thing is all up weight is ridiculous right so I didn't even expect it to be this well all right and you can see the how we are out of our other pitch you know we hit, it's a nice wave it's pretty much flat a little bit of waviness here but when we picked our uh, our last two which is our which is master slider or the master multiplier at point or 1.2 it's pretty much smoothened out so not bad now if we compare this to another PID tune someone else who also use uh, paper PID tuning and they tune a lot of quads um, there's that one they're hitting set point but it's overshooting a lot and, and to me this when I see this type of wave going through set point that, that to me that's still I don't know that's still a little bit noisy for my liking. I, I would prefer to hit set point, stay just above it or below it, but consistent, right? Consistently on top to the bottom. This overshoots a little bit and starts to drag down a little bit down here. So I wouldn't. That's probably not. That wouldn't fit my liking. I, I like this more, and definitely the Scotty Two Quad. Yeah, you know, sometimes this is a bit okay. So. There you go, guys. That's what I got for now, guys. If you have any questions, comments, leave it in the leave it in the description. Hopefully, I can answer for you, and hopefully, this helps you guys to be able to, you know, tune your own quads and, and feel good about it. It's gonna take some time. It took me, I'd, I'd say, about three or four. No, that's all. It took me about six or seven quads where I felt like I can do this uh, almost with my eyes closed. I didn't really. I, Doing this video for you guys, it took me probably like an hour and a half, but I'm at a point now where I could tune my quads in like 40 minutes. 40 minutes, one battery, not even have to be outside, and I'm very confident that this is going to be a smooth flyer outside with a budget build. We're making a budget build, guys, fly like a premium build just because of the tuning, all right? When I'm out in the field sometimes and I do hear, you know, the trilling, the loud motors, the crunchiness, I'm like, oh my goodness, and these are coming from good pilots, you know, and I'm like, gosh, you're better than me, much better, but if you had a tuned quad, just imagine how much more better you would be, if that's even a proper verbiage, more better, more better blues, whatever, you know, it, it's, it hurts me, it pains me when I, when I hear that stuff, you know, because I'm like, ooh, those are some hot motors, the longevity of that's not going to be good, right? Longevity of my flights aren't good either because I crash a lot, right? But 
this is going to help you guys even fly better, right? You're gonna, it's gonna be more point and shoot. So that's what I got for you guys. I'm gonna put it all together. Let's go outside and do some flights. And uh, yeah, hope you got something out of this. Um, like I said, if you want to do Ryan's uh, paid version, I would recommend supporting him. You know, he does a great job with this, and it makes it very simple for us to do. I mean, I, I, in my mind, I don't know of anything that's more simple than this. This pit tuning, basement pit tuning, has been a blessing to me because it's so freaking easy when you, once you do it a few times. All right, that's what I got for you guys. Hope you enjoyed. Sky to Quadi, sign up. 25, mini one. And it's recording. All right, let's go. On 8S, so go easy around here first. Oh, I just want to hear some punch. Wow. It has got the juice, guys. Sound of the motors are great. Budget motors, guys, budget. These are Surpass Hobby. Really, I like to just call them nothings, really. Tune is smooth, guys. Basement pit is smooth. Golly, it's good. This is flying better than any iFlight. Nine or 10 inch. Listen to that, listen. To, I, you see that? There's no bounce back, there's nothing. Listen to that, guys. This thing is ripping. Woo, that was me. This tune is so freaking tight. God dang, guys. That's all we're gonna do for today. I want to fly it when there's more sun. And I'm going to have to just pull it in. Maybe I'll get... Let's see here. See how nimble it is. Oh, it is pretty nimble. That's it, guys. Oh, ho, 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 ho. that was too close. My tilt, my up tilt is so high, I can't really tell where I am, so I'm gonna land it safely out here. That's it. I call that a successful first flight, guys, on 8S, 8 inch. And were we still recording? It appears that the GoPro 7 is still recording. Yes, it is, guys. So that was a, about a four-minute flight. 
cruise it around locally on 8s and this is with the basement pit tune guys the basement pit tune that you guys we did the tutorial on it you'll be able to do this on your own quad your own macro size quad and any quad that there is guys today we just did the maiden flight with the 300 dollars 2024 dji nine inch build running 8s on eight inch props we did or we're going to do uh, we actually did a pit tune of it with 8s and we just flew it out in the park right now and it was a successful flight the only reason i couldn't really fly crazy because there's too many people around and i didn't want to like hit their cars or or people walking around so i had to watch out for that but this thing guys look at this we tuned this using basement pit tuning and i did all of the tune inside my bedroom <laughs> and as you probably saw you will see it seems crazy but without even coming out here i did the pit tune completely in my bedroom and it flew incredible out here out in the open all around these trees doing whatever the heck i wanted to do point and shoot and that's the whole objective of this whole build series more more of a part series and setting up your quad an actual a pit tuning series because i want you guys to be able to do this on your own without asking me or asking out asking anyone and no matter what type of quad you have it could be the most basic budget motors which is this this is surpass hobby uh 3110s right they're not a, a big name brand and i got all four of them for 59 dollars at aliexpress shipped all right and i have them on 1280 on 9s or 9 inch and 8s i have it geared down to our motor output of 960 kV and this thing just freaking flew motors were completely cool when i brought it down and you'll hear because i went ahead and videoed it with this uh dji action 4 and you'll hear the motors you can hear how sound how good the tune is the sound there's no there was no um bounce back there was no you know any twitching anything in the motors this this freaking quad is solid and we did it all in the bedroom and i want to teach you guys how to do it on your own so i hope you enjoy this build series or this series of videos on just how to pit tune using basic pit tuning i've been saying it for probably like a year and a half now about ryan white and how he teaches an excellent job does an extra job teaching about the basic pit tuning and well now you're about to find out why okay guys enjoy and hope you guys can build this one too if you have any questions about the frame come in like contact me directly with my call name and uh and i'll email you how to get it at about 51 dollars. all right guys that's what i got for now scott t Whitey, sign out where you at oh nice Which one? The one that you got on there. Oh, not lost. Not long at all. It's a hey, that's battery. That's why I have uh Okay. Two uh forest packs in, in series. Okay. Check. Wow, all the way to the end. Freaking A.
That looks like that was far. Oh, yeah. Look at that. that. This tune is incredible, man. Right this, it's all about this tune and cheap motors, bro. It's crazy. How much for the motor? 50, 59. 59. 59 shipped. For all four? Yep. You can't beat that. These 30, 3110s are the best. I mean, I have, I have the 28 uh, 12s on the other quad, but they're not even close to this. For power? Oh my God. I think my, my camera up tilt is so high, it's like I almost chopped myself yesterday. Because I came in too fast and I could I couldn't see <laughs> it wasn't stopping. I, I had to lift my feet up the other day because I was doing that. But I was on I was I was playing around with that that cheap Nazgul. The, the old one. Yeah. Steal these motors. They're ice cold. Oh wow. After a flight like that, dude, that's the, the pit tuning. I'm telling you, bro, I'm freaking I'm gonna upload it next week, man. If you freaking do it to your quad, you're gonna love it. I, I swear to god you're gonna okay. love it. It's so easy. And if you have a problem, just come I'm see gonna, me. I'm going to watch your yeah. video. I'm going to follow it, and I'm going to learn from you.